Danny Pavitt. Thank you very much, Tom. Nice to uh, hear all of those things being said at the same time. It makes me feel like I've made good use of my time here, Miss. Um, so uh, again, my name is Danny Pavitt. I'm going to be moderating this uh, this uh, committee briefing today. So the way that we're going to operate, I'm going to introduce the delegates, uh, and then from there, I have a couple of questions. And then also, as Tom mentioned, uh, towards the end, I'd like to field some questions from, uh, from you all. If, if anything, while, while the delegates are speaking, if anything comes up, I encourage you to raise your hand at the end, and I'll come uh, bring the microphone to you, and, and you, can, you can ask the delegates. Also, for the, uh, for the, for the people that were represented uh, in each breakout session, I will also come to you for some questions. So to begin, I will start on this side here, representing ECOSOC. Uh, the first delegate from Japan, representing Japan, excuse me, Mason Moritz, uh, and the representative from Canada, James McKinnon. Uh, Security Council, we have two representatives, one from Russia, David Cordier, and then the USA delegate, Sriram Mathalia. Did I say that right? Good. Uh, also from the General Assembly on the far side, uh, we have Alex Harding Bradley, representing Syria, and Tom Lil, representing India. So first, I'm going to give a little overview. I sat in on uh, all of the breakout sessions. So I'm going to give a little overview of some things that were discussed. Um, again, this has been another opportunity for me to be continually impressed uh, by all the delegates, um, even learning a lot in each one of the sessions that I went to. So uh, thank you all very much. Thank you all. Um, so the first one, talk about uh, Security Council. The topic being discussed in the Security Council breakout session was the situation in the Middle East, which as we all know is extremely complicated. Um, and again, I applaud the efforts uh, of the delegates in that breakout session. Some of the things that came up, there was a lot of talk, historical context, um, also Gulf states taking refugees, again as we know is a, an extremely relevant topic right now, with an interesting nonchalance, things like bombing and no-fly zones were also brought up in that uh, breakout session. The Assad regime, ISIS, uh, and very, very relevant issues of transitional justice in the country. Uh, I'm talking about the ICC and The Hague, war crimes, and uh, so that was the Security Council. Again, very, very impressive. Next, the General Assembly. The topic in the General Assembly breakout session was equitable representation in the Security Council. So some of the things that came up out of that discussion Struggling to get uh, resolutions in on time, I noticed as I walked in there, there's a lot of discussion about how people were going to come together. Um, I understand that there were lots of, there was lots of rich debate going on in that class. Uh, additionally, issues for re-election for member states, the geographic and population considerations uh, as far as representation is concerned, and then veto rights and permanent versus non-permanent members. And then finally, in the ECOSOC breakout session, the topic being discussed in there was, the ins was ensuring universal access to water. A very heavily debated topic of or conservation, excuse me, uh, and the types of the ways in which conservation was going to happen. Also water distribution, the economic benefits uh, of the ways in which water is correctly distributed, international laws and regulations, drought cycles uh, was even brought up. And then going even more specifically talking about agricultural practices related to things like beef production um, and how the economy would be affected by those. So again, very rich discussions across the board, uh, and I applaud you all. With that said, I have a few questions. Uh, I guess I can start with the most uh, approachable for the delegates. Um, and I'm going to take a step back. This one works? Yes. Um, so I guess I can start here with you two gentlemen since you're the closest. Um, my first question, and feel free either of one of you to, to respond, and you just have to grab the mic out of there if that's easier. Uh, the first question is, can you, can you talk about some of the challenges in creating and agreeing upon some of the resolutions that came up towards the end? How were you balancing the individual uh, representations, the delegates, and were there any extreme situations that you were trying that were difficult to navigate? Uh, oh, okay. Turn that one. oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so in coming to our resolution, we had about two f two sort of groups formed at first, uh, who were making their own separate uh, resolutions, and eventually a third was created. 
Um, my group was sort of trying to focus on the economics of it and trying to get um, whether private parties or governmental funding for uh, water and its just distribution in particular. And other groups were trying to focus more towards the conservation side. And in the end, uh, there still ended up being two instead of the three. It uh, had sort of combined. Uh, I got my group to combine with another, and we tried to focus both focus on uh, conservation and the economic form. So our final resolution included both. Um, especially uh, earlier in the debate, um, their uh, U.S. and China had like their own little uh, our own little groups. And uh, there was really, it, it was really back and forth debate. Um, you had um, the U.S. with uh, the U.K. And, um, and France and all the other like countries that supported the U.S., which were, and uh, they supported. The main point of contention was the, how we're going to fund this. And the uh, U.S. said, like, oh, well, we use private investors with little a little bit of government influence on them like government regulations but china's like uh uh we it's it's all got to be government and then they had like their own little their own little uh group with um like russia and pakistan and um there there was no uh there was really no cor correlation or any discussion between the two, they were always uh, discussing amongst themselves. And uh, I forget who it was, but someone opened up a, uh, a compromise. Well, we can do both, and so um, that didn't that didn't really start going until after China and the U.S. left. So uh, we got a little bit more progress uh, without the U.S. and China there. So. Great, thank you very much. Yes, please. So my next question for you both gentlemen sitting at the Security Council table. Um, based on the response that we just got, it sounds like superpowers were very much, they were, they were well represented by their country delegates. And I wanted to ask you both, what was the dynamic like in your breakout session? concerning whether it be the U.S. Or, or you can talk about Russia or if there are any other delegations that were acting, you, you know, they, they did well to represent their country as far as their uh, sort of their outlook on the specific topics that you were talking about. I would say every country really represents, every, every person really represented their country pretty well. Like the U.S. and Russia obviously had very different views on uh, how to deal with the Middle East, <coughs> especially with relation to Syria. But um, like, and the other countries kind of like joined, like the UK and France kind of joined the US, and Angola and China kind of joined with the, with the Russians. So it was accurate in terms of like how alliances work. And like, there was one point where, near a breakout session where we were literally split into like two camps of like the US, France, the UK, New Zealand. And then on their side, it was like everybody else. So, <laughs> everybody else. So, like, it was accurate. Thanks, but like, but what we did end up compromising because like we had to give up something we wanted, and they had to give up something they wanted, so it worked out. Yeah, re uh, reiterating what he said, we had to compromise. We we actually managed to pass two resolutions, which is very good. Uh, we both had to give up something, and yet we both had to. Yeah, we both had to give up something. So, uh, for instance, for the no-fly zone. The United States and their camp, they wanted there to be a no-fly zone across all the major populated cities of Syria. However, we, Russia and our camp, we wanted to continue Russia's airstrikes against uh, the Islamic State, so we opposed that. However, we eventually came to an agreement that uh, there would be a no-fly zone over government and rebel-controlled cities, but there would still be a fly zone over cities controlled by the Islamic State. So that's just one example of how we both compromised and uh, showed unity um, for the greater pursuit of progress. Well said. Thank you very much. I'd like to make the point as well, I think it's important to highlight 
the complexities of the topics that these, that these delegates are talking about. And I think the value in being able to come together and create a resolution that appeases or makes everybody sitting at the table uh, sort of excited about that resolution is a, is a skill that not only is relevant uh, in this setting, but across many other settings. So thank you. Um, okay, my last, well, my next question, I should say, not my last. It seemed as though there were, I, I guess this question is about your personal ethical code and some of the things that were brought up in the sessions. As I mentioned before, um, issues sometimes of saying things like, we're going to bomb them or they're going to get killed. Those are, those are words with heavy implications in the international setting. And so this question for both of you, and then I'll open this up to anybody else that'd like to respond as well. How did you balance being delegates, representations of Syria and India and saying things that perhaps you did or did not agree with? How, how did that balance work for you? Do you understand my question? Test. Okay, good. Um, well, for me, um, although I had certain opinions about how many um, non-permanent member seats the Middle East should have gotten, I kind of, I tried setting them aside and I kind of put myself in into the perspective of I represent the country of Syria and I want to get the best possible deal for Syria to be represented in the General Assembly. So I, although I had some like inner conflict, inner conflict, yes, um, in my views, I decided just to filter out my personal views and represent Syria fully. And I tried to make as many compromises as possible, uh, once again, um, to get Syria the best opportunity and like a good resolution for Syria that would still get passed. So, thank you. So. Um, uh, I am actually a Chinese citizen, and I have to think about uh, how to avoid China from veto our plan. So um, actually, uh, China was uh, one of the big opponents of, uh, against our plan with uh, United States and uh, Iran. So um, we have to think about how to. Um, I have to uh, put my values as a Chinese away to uh, fully become uh, a representative to India. And um, we actually um, opposed a ton of idea from China. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. So I think that the responses to that question are very, very interesting. How, how do we deal with internal conflicts? I think that's, that's the term that you use, inner conflict. Um, so gentlemen, I'd like to open that question up to, to anybody else that has anything they'd like to say about how you, how you balanced your personal views and your personal ideas with uh, the things that you were saying and, and recommending for, towards a resolution. So, um, at first, when I first started, I thought, oh, I'll just represent Canada because it's just water. And like, it, there's no like moral objections to that. But then I found out that, well, the United States had very different views from mine. But I still went with them because they're big and scary. And so it, like, it, it's kind of, you have to balance, like, you have to remember that, oh, I'm not me, I'm this country. And that, that was pretty difficult because, I mean, I know nothing about Canada and their water policies. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm from California. I probably spent a good hour on Wikipedia reading up Canada's water policies. And, and you just, it kind of takes like, just like, it's a mix of like fear and like, it's a mix of fear and common sense where like, like sometimes you don't accurately represent your country because you have your own views and like you think it's common sense. Like, oh, well, it's common sense. Like you, you give water to this country and they flourish. But then there's like a big scary country like, like China who goes like, yeah, we don't think so. And then you go like, yeah, we don't think so either. And it's, <laughs> it, it's just really complicated. Thank you. 
Um, so when we were concerning water, uh, water is something a lot of us take for granted. And like now that we have a drought, a lot of people are becoming more aware of it. So then of course, of course we want to give water to everyone. We want everyone to have uh, easy access to clean water that's sanitized and good. But when I was representing Japan, who's a very import heavy, export heavy uh, nation, I have to consider the economic basis for that. And then in talking with a lot of other people, I realized that a lot of the, these other countries uh, were worried about the economic aspect to it. So that turned out to be my major point for coming to a resolution is uh, worrying about the economic standpoint and thinking about conservation and access later. So, yeah. Thank you. Another very interesting point, balancing what you're trying to accomplish with some of the out, sort of outstanding uh, issues. You know, you talk about conservation, but if economic development is the approach um, to achieving uh, conservation, that's something to consider. So thank you. Gentlemen, do either of you have anything to add to this? Um, yes. What you have to realize is that if you live in a country, so we live in the United States, you tend to think from the perspective or from the viewpoint that the politicians from the United States do. But you have to put yourself in the shoes of the country that you are representing. And you have to represent what their people think, what their politicians think, in order to accurately have a model you win. Thank you. I would say, I want to say like, um, like the, like dealing with the Middle East, like it's not as simple as like, as many people make it out to be. Like there's so many, there's so much history and so many factions and so many different beliefs and so many like little internal conflicts within internal conflicts. So like, it's so, like, um, it's kind of like, you really have to understand a lot of like major components of like how everything works. Like how, like in Syria, like the Syrian government is battling like two separate groups of people right now. And like the Turkish, the like Turkey is battling like two separate groups. So like it's kind of tough. Like yeah, you really have to like wrap your mind around like such a complicated, like insane conflict. And that's kind of like it's it's tough to do. But like to solve the problems, you kind of have to do it. So it's okay. Great. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. So at this point, we have about. Please, yeah. Let's uh, give a round of applause. <laughs> So at this point, we have about 10 minutes left. Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, I'd like to field some questions from the audience. Uh, if anybody does have a, a question they'd like to ask, please raise your hand. I can bring a, a microphone to you. Additionally, uh, the group in the, in the front here, if you have questions, I, I'd like to field those as well. So this is a question for any of the delegates. Um, how do you think this activity helped you in your communication skills when trying to uh, collaborate with other delegations? Um, this act, um, the model UN, it helped, sim it helped stimulate the actual UN in which you have different groups of people who are each believing in their different goals, and they each want their own separate things. But you have to balance it out with what other people want. So this helps your communication skills by, by, re, by realizing that you have to balance out what you want with what somebody else wants. And you have to be able to convince them that either your way is right or that there is some sort of compromise. Yeah, I wanted to add, like, I, like, that was a good explanation. Like, whatever business we go into, like, none of us are really going to get our way, like, 100%, whatever we do, you know? So, like, all of us are going to have to negotiate and compromise. And, like, this, is, this was great practice because, like, all of us kind of, like, at, were set in our, like, all the countries in our delegation were really set in our ways. Like, we had one, we had, like, we had certain goals, but, like, we had to compromise on, like, some of them and, like, Good, like good explaining of like why we find something important, and like we, you have to be able to listen to why other countries find something important. So it helps your so like this activity really helps our like communication and listening skills and makes us just better negotiators. I think. Thank you. 
Yes, um, I also think that it's great for communication skills because no matter how hard you prep and no matter how hard you research, you never really know which, what, like, what the meeting is going to lead to. Like you know the general area, but you're not quite sure whether it's going to focus on that or whether that country is going to bring up that. So it's kind of like responding to change and I think that has greatly helped me um, in my communication skills. Great, thank you. I think it um, also helps to um, get along with the people you have never met. Uh, I have uh, never met uh, my uh, friends from uh, representing the United States, but it actually turns out that uh, we work so well. And um, also I think um, it's, it's kind of um, training us for um, learn how to um, sacrifice some of our things. For example, um, like when we try to put Japan into uh, one of the nominee to the uh, permanent seat, um, I was thinking, oh really, I'm going to write Japan down as a Chinese? I thought, no, 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 no. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I realized, well, um, I'm representing this country, so I have to be an Indian for temporarily. So <laughs> then um, I wrote it down. And also uh, for some values, uh, we us originally we tried to uh, put three per three more permanent seats and later um, other my friends say that well we can probably only do two because um, that significantly decreased our opportunity to get vetoed especially from China and Russia so um, we say okay we'll do two but I will think about well if we do two then India is probably not going to be um, nominated to be the permanent seat and so we'll say well I have to do that because um, it's for um, the it's be it benefits everyone instead of just my country. Great, thank you. Um, I, what I found out was that, uh, that your opinion matters and um, like I'm, I'm Canada and I thought, oh, I'm gonna be in a room of a bunch of superpowers, but then I realized that what I said counted, and that was good and bad, because I, I was trying to convince um, I was trying to convince some countries uh, uh, so some countries I was trying to convince China to join our to join our resolution, and then I said something I said oh like oh desalination plants, and they just said nope nope. No, we, we don't like the idea of sal desalination. It's inefficient, and it's inefficient, and it's just not cost effective, and we won't have anything about it. So, so we had, like, we just had to change our resolution. Like, like the choice was either change the resolution to get China in, or just have to accept the fact that China doesn't want to do that. So, I believe we changed the resolution. Um, um, but it, it, it just it just goes to show that like what you say matters. So, okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> to add on to what he was saying, yeah, in the UN, um, like everyone's voice matters. Even the small countries have a vote. So, like no matter what, you're gonna um, be able to give your voice and you're be able, gonna be able to be heard. So I think that's a really important thing, both in the UN and in life itself, uh, with having to compromise. Thank you very much, and I think that's a very relevant point, especially for the conversation that was happening uh, in the General Assembly, because it was an issue uh, less, you know, we're talking about issues in the Middle East, we're talking about water over here, and over there it was a very internal discussion about the operations within the UN, and I think that was a, a, a theme well chosen, so congratulations to you both. Um, from there, yes, I'd like any more questions, I see one, thank you. Uh, just a first part of the question for you all. How many of you, all of you, was this a first time event of the Model UN? Amazing. Okay, for maybe just the panelists up front then, who this is the first time, what did you expect might happen versus what actually did happen today? Um, I expected a bunch of political jargon that I wouldn't be able to understand. 
and I thought it would be way more complicated than it actually was. But in reality, they explained everything clearly on how to do stuff and how to say what you say what you believe and how to voice your claim. They told you how to do everything, uh, which is completely the opposite of what I expected. I thought they were just going to throw you into the deep end and tell you how to and tell you to swim. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I was. I, I also was kind of worried, like I wouldn't be able to pick up on how proceedings went, and like I wouldn't be able to like understand what's going on, and so I'd kind of be like left in the dust. But actually, they did explain everything, and like even and like when I made a mistake of like proposing a motion when we shouldn't propose a motion, uh, the moderator just told me like that's not you don't have the time for this now, so like do it later, and we just moved on. So like it was a very it, they were very like nice, and then we got into the groove of things like pretty quick and so our debates got like very very policy based and like the time for like for like debating on how the debate went was like over so we actually debated policy it was, it was very good um, so what I expected uh, here was, it's my first time, and I was expecting sort of the ability to just sort of lay back and not really do anything. Just sort of watch over and get a feel for it. But, and it was like that for the first session. I said maybe one thing. And then the second session, I ended up getting way more heavily involved than I expected to. I got uh, really involved and really into it, and it was a great time. I'm definitely going to be back next year. Okay. <laughs> Um, I kind of had the same approach. I thought, oh, I'm Canada. I don't matter. Just <laughs> lean back, kind of like just watch everything. Let 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 the U.S., China, and Russia duke it out, and just enjoy the show. But um, I, it it was it was very hard to just kind of like lay low. Like it, it was just very like it was very complicated. And um, I found out that this is a lot harder than usual. Like. Like just like personally, I think I'm very good at politics, but I learned of this like, no, you're not because because <laughs> it takes a lot of skill to like convince like delegates to like come over to your side, and like there are these two countries in uh, particular. Um, I'm not going to mention them, um, <laughs> but they were very very annoying when it came because they're all like. <laughs> They were kind of like manipulating me, like they're they're all like, oh well, we l we like this country's de uh, proposal, but we we don't know if you're gonna like do this. And I'm like, well, okay, well, what do you need? And like, I, I and then uh, they they were like they were, they were together, but they were very small countries, and so it it was just it took me by surprise that like these two countries, I would, I would get like so frustrated over these two countries, so. <laughs> Thank you. Very interesting. You, you have a bright future in politics, I think. Thank you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I was going to think that I would just be done for this, and uh, I would just sit there doing nothing for uh, more than four hours, and uh, go to restroom as frequently as possible to, uh, <laughs> to avoid uh, conversation as much as possible. And um, later, and uh, when the um, the chairman's uh, talking about the rules. I was like, what is that? I have no idea what they're talking about. And um, I was like, well, I ju I'll just wave to that other people you use that these uh, motions. And then I, 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 I start using the motions by learning from them. And um, I was thinking, like, uh, do I have to memorize the whole position paper to, um, <laughs> to, start, uh, my, uh, uh, to start my speaking? And I actually start to taking notes for my position paper, uh, for my notes. And I actually found that that is not necessary. <laughs> and um, actually, many of uh, my points uh, is created without my position paper. I even don't have a printed copy for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And although this is technically not my first Mali UN conference that I went to, it, it felt like it was, because this was the first one that I was fully involved in and helped write the resolution. And I really got to incorporate, um, I really got to incorporate my communication skills in this. And without like, I felt like this was my first one, because previously I'd only be slightly involved, like 
I may help one resolution get sponsors, and I may say a thing or two. But in this one, um, the moderators helped a lot because I submitted a resolution, and they kind of helped me get through it, and they helped me understand the, the details of how to make one and how to shape one, and I really think I learned a lot from this. So. Great, thank you very much uh, for your responses. I think uh, an interesting point that came up out of this is that having organized uh, this event, this, this exact event last year, I understand how far in advance uh, the students prepare and, and the investigations that they go through to bring all of this great knowledge to the table. Um, and it's nice to know also that there are moments of personal growth that happen while at the conference. So uh, again, I applaud you all, and I think thank you everybody. So in order to have enough time to hand out the awards, uh, this concludes the committee briefing for the Lyceum's fourth annual Model United Nations Conference. Let's thank our representatives with a big round of applause before they take their seats. <laughs> Gentlemen as well, if you'd like, you, you can take your seats in the audience here and we can continue. Thank you. So I want to take a minute to recognize each and every one of you and congratulate you on all the hard work you've put into today's conference. As you know, the purpose of the United Nations, the purposes of the United Nations are to maintain international peace and security, develop friendly relations among nations and pursue universal peace, achieve international cooperation in solving international problems, and be a center for harmonizing nations' actions in order to achieve these goals. Each of you is a distinguished representative of a nation with a specific history, geography, culture, and perspective. The importance of gathering as a community of nations united in the pursuit of solutions to international issues is not to be overlooked. The work is never over, but every step matters tremendously. We want to give you a huge round of applause, another huge round of applause, uh, for the progress that you've made today and the resolutions that you have achieved. Congratulations and thank you. So we are now entering the Lyceum's um, Model United Nations Award Ceremony. The purpose of the ceremony is to honor representatives who have gone above and beyond to prepare for this conference uh, and to represent their nation. At this time, I would like to invite uh, the General Assembly dais up to the front and we can start with that award presentation. First of all, we would like to award outstanding position preparation. So our two delegates that had the outstanding position preparation are United Arab Emirates. Please come forward. <laughs> and Greece. This is for the General Assembly. Thank you guys. So now is for the outstanding representation during the meeting. We have uh, delegates from the United States of America. It's Benjamin and Wilson. And Syria, Alex. And China, Ching. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. At this point, we can bring up the Security Council.
Hello, everybody. I want to commend the work that was done today in the Security Council. You came from a lot of different viewpoints. You put in a lot of preparation, and I believe that the resolutions that were passed were, absolutely, were actually substantial and definitely could use some of those points in real resolutions. Now, without any further ado, let me pr pres present the position paper awards. First, I would like to present it to Malaysia, represented by Orlinka Mitoko Karir and Coco Chai. Champion uh, golfer from Santa Catalina. <laughs> <laughs> and for the second position paper award, I'd like to recognize Venezuela, represented by Ben Ha. Okay, now we'll move on to the Outstanding Representation Rewards. So I'd like to begin with the first award being presented to Russia, being represented by David Cordier and Jack Connolly. Yeah. Can you take this one? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. And the final Outstanding Representation Award goes to Angola, represented by David Sanchez. Excellent, thank you very much. And finally, for ECOSOC. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, just to reiterate, um, Everyone did such a great job. It was really impressive, and they put so much preparation in. So great job, you guys. Um, I'd like to first recognize um, for outstanding representation, Switzerland delegation, represented by Akshaz Devudula. <laughs> Uh, next outstanding representation to Japan, represented by Mason Moritz and Jasmine Miller. Congratulations. And lastly, for outstanding representation, uh, Canada, represented by James McKinnon. And now I will present the best position paper. Although I'd like to say that all of you had done a wonderful job, so it's really hard for me to choose the best position papers, albeit I still did. Okay. The best uh, position preparation goes to China, uh, represented by Ivan Davidek and Ryan Lin. I understand that they're not here because they left in the middle of the term, but it's okay, I'll forgive them. <laughs> okay. And the best prep position prep um, preparation goes to Ireland, represented by Nathan Torre and Ronan McCarthy, uh, who is not here again. <laughs> okay. And the final prize of best position paper goes to the delegate of Japan, represented by Jasmine Miller and Mason Moritz. I guess I'll just have to here. Yeah. Thank you very much. And with that said, I'll pass it back over to Tom, and we have some closing remarks here. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. You did a great job, and thank you. Uh, the panel was re amazingly good. I thought, uh, right on the on the money in terms of thinking on your feet, which we talked about, the the need for collaboration and communication, which is crucial. A Eighty-eight percent of jobs. Uh, statistically in, involve collaboration and uh, 
you saw it today in, in action. Very few people go off and work by themselves. So you learned about compromise uh, and how to get your point across. Thinking on your feet, Tom, and the way you said that, exactly right. I didn't need my notes, I could do it. So I was very impressed with, with all of you. I wanna recognize our chair, committee chairs once again, and please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Danny, thank you for a great job. Ashley, thank you for organizing this so well. Thank you all parents for coming. It was a great, great to see you all here. I'm sure we'll have a larger and even better conference next November. And we are going to be collecting your name tags as you leave. So would you do us the great favor of removing your name tag now and we'll have a couple of representatives of the box in the back and we use those over. And thank you, and thank you, and thank you. Good evening. <laughs>